Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Smart Start, the program that takes you through your pre-orientation process as you prepare to begin your first year of study with us at the UB St. Augustine campus. As always, we would like to acknowledge and give a very special shout out to those students joining us for the very first time across islands in the Caribbean or any of the international territories. We say a very special welcome to you. Welcome to FYE, your first year experience at the UB St. Augustine. And of course, for those students that were here with us at our last three Smart Start sessions and are back again this week, we say welcome back. We are truly, truly honored that you have all made the UB St. Augustine campus your choice for learning. And through the FYE program, we are committed, of course, to ensuring that you are successful in your first year of study and that you have a dynamic and truly rewarding university experience. I'm Gerald Alda, Manager of Student Engagement at the Division of Student Services and Development. And it is my absolute pleasure as always, students, to welcome you this afternoon on behalf of the entire team at the UE St. Augustine campus. Particularly for our first time students today, we want to let you know that FYE is our campus's new student orientation program planned just for you to ensure that you're successful in your first year of study with us. We understand at the campus that transition into university life is a process. And so through FYE, you will be engaged and exposed to quite a number of useful resources and exciting initiatives like this one that will work to get you settled, comfortable and equipped with all that you need to have a strong and solid foundation for the university journey ahead. So students, our challenge for you in this first year is to discover your power and create your future. Now, Smart Start is one of our FYE initiatives, particularly designed to meet your early informational needs, as we understand how important it is for you to have a strong foundation of knowledge and adequate information every step of the way to help you navigate this important transition to university. Today is our penultimate session for Smart Start, but of course, for those sessions that you may have missed or would simply like to recap, we invite you to visit our FYE YouTube channel to access those video recordings. So students, last week we look at we looked sorry at your university experience beyond the classroom, and we spent some time introducing you to the wide array of developmental opportunities, campus resources, engagement activities, and student support services made available to you right here at your new home, the UV St. Augustine campus, where as a community we all work to ensure that you attain the highest levels of success while having a truly fulfilling university experience. Today's agenda is exciting as always, and the focus is academic readiness. It is an extra special session as we are joined by a cross-faculty team of experts. We will begin today with a presentation and conversation led by one of our campus's faculty development specialists. He is Dr. Justin Zephrin. And after Dr. Justin, Dr. Zephrin's presentation, we will head over to our virtual breakout rooms where you will have an incredible opportunity to meet, engage, and learn from members within your respective faculty on all of the all important process of academic advising. So you're definitely in the right place on this Thursday afternoon, all right? So as always, students, during the session, we ask that you engage with us in the chat and take note of all of the important information and points that will be shared with you throughout. We also ask that when not speaking, you keep your microphone muted. So and if you have a question or comment to direct to any one of our presenters this afternoon, please indicate by using the raise hand feature, which can be found at the bottom of your screen, after which you, be, you will be called upon and given an opportunity to make your contribution. So now that you've been briefed and you know exactly what to expect today, it is my absolute pleasure to invite our first presenter to the virtual stage, Dr. Justin Zephrin. Dr. Zephrin, over to you. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alder, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're very happy that you, you've chosen the, the University of the West Indies to be um, part of your next uh, journey or journey towards your next milestone. Um, this afternoon, we really want to explore the whole concept of academic readiness. And now this session, we're going to, you know, have a bit of a conversation, you know, I would say more of a discussion um, about academic readiness and all that it entails. All right. Now, let's get straight into it. Um, as Mr. Aldous said, well, I'm, I'm your facilitator, your presenter for this segment. And... Um, and I'm happy to be here and to, 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 to interact with you in this regard. So to guide us with our presentation or this, this segment, 
um, we're going to explore these things. We're going to look at academic readiness. What does it mean? What does it mean to be academically ready? And then, of course, we'll explore um, some of the expectations that you might have and maybe expectations that persons may have of you. <laughs> All right. And that is not just, of course, pertaining to the university's requirements or expectations um, regarding you, but also you may have your family may have expectations. You know, your friends may have expectations. So, you know, the pressure is real, but no pressure, right? So we can handle this. Um, I mean, you survived keep, so that's a, you know, for some of you, so that's a big milestone in itself. So, um, and then we're gonna look at some of the, the mistakes or challenges or, or hurdles that may, 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 that you may encounter, or at least we can alert you to those, those, those possible challenges or mistakes so that you can um, be guided accordingly and avoid those, making those mistakes. And then we're going to look at some practices um, that you can adopt in your particular journey throughout this university, especially in your first year. And then we look at um, some tips that could facilitate your all-round development, academic growth, development, and continuous learning. Because we know that learning doesn't stop just with um, your, your time in this university. Yeah. Um, for some of you, you probably thought it may have stopped at um, A levels or, or whatnot, but here we are, right? So, so by all means, we're gonna have a very um, interactive discussion um, as we proceed. So when it comes to academic readiness, so, so I wanna hear from you even now, what do you understand by the term academic readiness? Now there's no wrong answer, all right? So I wanna hear from you, you can use your mic or maybe your the chat, what do you understand by academic readiness? So what does academic readiness mean to you? All right, it looks like I'm like, okay, we have some. All right, good. Um, so being prepared, Maya, thank you so much for that. Being prepared, all right. Anybody else or do you wanna elaborate on that, Maya? Being prepared for what? Shuma said, having a schedule ready and being prepared for the workload. Okay, good, good, good. So we have a common thread already. Anybody else? Tanisha said, to be ahead of the... Ooh, I like that. Oh, you're being proactive, Tanisha. Okay, good. Anissa said, being prepared for the methods um, to study, to focus academically. Um, okay, good. Katana said, you have to set, sorry, you have set your mind to pursue your goal, good. To be success, successfully prepared and academic, sorry, to be successfully prepared academically, okay. Um, I guess to mean to be sufficiently prepared, all right, for the academic journey, okay. Uh, okay, we have having sufficient knowledge and skills to navigate the, ooh, very good, I like that one. Leanne said, being ready to learn new things. Having all things needed to do your best. Ooh, okay, all right. This is a this is I like this group. Being prepared for the shift from secondary classes to tertiary classes. Yes, that is a big part of it. Putting putting the the right time and effort into your work. Necessary. Very good. Preparing for the workload ahead and having a clear mindset. Um, Azaria said mental, physical, emotional prepare. Ooh, Azaria could just hit a high five, right? Because um, that is a big part of it. And we'll, we'll discuss that as we go further, further along. Hillary said, prepared holistically. Exactly, on point. All right, so we have a good bit of, 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 of responses. Thank you so much for that. Being disciplined, and that's a word we will also be using along the way. So balance, discipline, um, those sorts of things. So those are very um, relevant and, 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 and applicable words regarding this, regarding academic readiness, all right? Um, look, someone said, uh, I think this is a uh, good evening. In my opinion, it's being mentally, financially, and otherwise prepared for the tasks given or endeavors academically. Nice. Good, good. And some of it is emotionally as well. So we have some persons who mentioned holistically and so on. So, you know, it could take an emotional toll this journey. So it's just about being prepared and being equipped, not just being prepared, but equipped with the necessary knowledge and skills. Um, as you, you embark upon this particular milestone or journey. Oops, sorry. So what is academic readiness all about? When we think of academic readiness, we think of the degree to which a student is prepared for a learning experience. So in other words, are you prepared, as some persons mentioned in the, in the, in the chat, 
Um, another definition, now I didn't go to chat GPT for this, so that's another conversation altogether, but all right, possession of the knowledge and skills to do your first year credit bearing um, college level work. All right, good, good. So, so of course, this is specifically to having necessary skills, necessary knowledge um, to, to navigate through your first year experience. And I would venture to say it's a little more than just your first year experience, even though this is in the context of your first year experience um, at the university. The, the, the knowledge and the skills that you develop even now through this initiative, not just this session, but last week's session and the entire um, program, orientation program, um, these are uh, skills and, and bits of information that you can apply throughout your time in the, at the university. Yeah, I remember when I, when <laughs> in my orientation many years ago, um, some of the things that were, were, were told to us, I was able to apply throughout, even into graduate studies and so on. Um, and even in other institutions. So, you know, the the this program, this initiative is very, very, um, very important, and it's it's it, it it provides a foundation that you can through which you can survive and thrive um, at the university and beyond. So, one of the other definitions, and perhaps the most um, succinct definition, is of academic readiness is being prepared to face and succeed over the, the uh, various multifaceted challenges that you may encounter throughout your academic journey. And the reason I like this definition um, is that it focuses on all aspects. So not just the academic, but the emotional, someone mentioned financial, um, the social, um, psychological, and all these things um, that are necessary um, because you will encounter challenges because it's almost like a snowball effect. To, to, to say we could take one in a vacuum and just say focus on the academics, might be remiss of us. So um, we definitely want to take that holistic approach or have that perspective at least. Um, and then of course, your academic journey. Your academic journey doesn't stop, it didn't stop with, with CAPE, it didn't stop with CSEC uh, for some of you. It stopped, it, and it probably wouldn't stop with this with your first degree. You may go on to graduate studies, you may go on to do a master's degree, a postgrad certificate, et cetera, at this university or, or, or anywhere else for that matter. Um, even when you continue, when you when you go into the world of work, your academic journey does not stop there. So academic readiness, um, as we mentioned, and as you rightly mentioned in the chat, um, is multidimensional, multifaceted. So when I say cognitive, what do I mean by that? Cognitive, you must be cognitively ready. Right? And academic readiness involves um, having that cognitive capacity. What does that mean? I'll help you there. So cognitive, uh, when we think of cognitive, um, the cognitive aspect in terms of academic readiness. Okay, good, we have some responses here. Um, to be conscious, ah, okay, Kirsten, I like that. All right, cognitive, being, being conscious, okay, being aware of different things and not just in terms of the information that is being presented to you in terms of your courses and your classes and your assessments and learning activities and so on. Um, but also, yes, uh, Hillary being mentally ready or mentally equipped or prepared, all right? Um, because it can take a toll. Remember, you're learning, you're being exposed to things and your brain has a big part to play in this. So we're thinking about the ability to, to, to process information, to be aware of your learning. So, um, and that is something we call metacognition, to be aware of um, your learning preferences or your strengths. So for example, I thought for many years, that, um, well, maybe I used to, yeah. <laughs> um, I like to learn best by reading and listening and that sort of thing. And that was true to an extent. And then I realized when I when I did, you know, a, a survey again, the survey again, um, I realized that I'm more of a visual and a kinesthetic type of learner now. So, so all of this is part of the cognitive, how you process information, how you study. You might have, you already you may have, um, you may have, um, have your, your own study habits, and those may need to be adjusted because this is a new level, a new, um, um, in terms of the amount of work that you're exposed to, all of that would need to be considered. When we think of the effective, we think of the emotional. So are you emotionally ready or equipped to, 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 for this academic journey? Yeah? So, you know, if you have some sort of, you, you, you like certain things, you, 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 have a, a close affinity to certain things or people, yeah? That is a big, that is a big part of it. 
Yeah. Sometimes you might, if, if it's a broken heart, then it could have a snowball effect to affect your, you know, and it affects your academic performance and so on. So you want to be mindful of these things going in. All right. That things can happen. And your emotional part is a part of you, is an important part of you. And so that requires some sort of emotional intelligence to manage your emotions. If it is you didn't do well or as well as you thought you should have done in a particular exam or a particular course, do you flip out? Or do you keep it together, breathe, and you know, gather your thoughts, manage emotions, and try harder? All right? The psychomotor. What do I mean by psychomotor? When it comes to academic readiness. The psychomotor part of things. So we looked at the cognitive, we discussed the affective. Now about the psychomotor. And Nathaniel said with regard to cognitive, being able to comprehend what's being taught, yes, very important. And psychomotor, um, what does that pertain to? And you can use your mic, sir. You don't always have to use the chat. I like to hear from you as well. All right, the Calvin Ogden, oh, well, the psychomotor is the, I would say the affective is more of the psychological, but the psychomotor is more of the skills. Yeah, the skills. So, um, yes, related, yes, Alex, related to mental health and so on, but the physical aspects. Okay, all right, Alex, could you elaborate on that perhaps? So we're using, I was saying, you cover process, perception, attention. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, mm -hmm. you know, some people learn by doing things. Yes. Yeah, absolutely right. I think you hit the nail on the head, Alex. So so that's exactly it. You might learn more, like I said, learn by doing, <laughs> right? So you like your kinesthetics, you like the hands-on approach. That would be something as well. And then there are other skills you may develop along the way. So, so you may not be as versed in terms of, let's say, your technology skills or expertise. But during the program, you're going to have to use, develop those technology skills, all right, whether it's to do presentations and navigate and, uh, through the online environment, those sorts of things, all right? And then there may be skills specific to your field, all right? Many of you might be doing labs and, 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 and rotations and, and um, ward, being on wards and so on if you're in the medical sciences, if you're in engineering and all these different things, or even field work if you're in the humanities and social sciences, yeah? So... All of that is developing your skill set. And then we have the social. Of course, we all know what that is about, really relating to other persons. So building relationships, social relationships, interacting with other persons, and being able to manage that so that it doesn't hinder, but really helps you to thrive in your academic journey. All right? Now, when we talk about academic readiness, we, and of course, this is linked to the learning outcomes we identified earlier. It's all about managing expectations, It's which we, we'll discuss. It's about identifying the common mistakes or hurdles that may lie ahead so you know how to um, navigate successfully and thrive. Um, we're going to look at the, the, the healthy practices. So practices that would help you do just, do just that, thrive in your academic journey. And of course, tips that would help you, um, that will cause you to, con that will continue um, where you will continue to thrive. Yeah. So when you think of expectations, um, <laughs> we, you know, there are expectations or dreams and then we have reality. What are some expectations um, do you have as a first year student at the University of the West Indies? And let me call some persons because I'd like to hear from you. So Karina, um, do you want to share what are some expectations that you may have um, at the university as a first year student at the university? To get all ease. Ah, to get all ease. All right. Okay. Okay. I like where this is going. To get all ease. All right. Good. I'll come back to that one. All right. I'm not saying you can't get all ease. Eh? I'm just saying you would also have to do the work to get all ease. All right. Because it doesn't just happen like that, but you have to do the work. So, Karina, um, thank you so much for that. Uh, let's see. Natanya said to make the adjustment from working into studying as e. Ooh. Okay. I like that one, Natanya. Okay, so so good. So you have that expectation as well. Anybody else? 
Let's see some of the other persons. Um, uh, Calvin, what are some expectations do you have as a first year student? Or oh, Calvin, you, 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 you beat me to it, right? You decided to type it in the chat. Okay, I see you, I see you. All right, to gain as much knowledge as possible to contribute to my field. And what is your field, Calvin? Is it in the medical sciences? Is, this, is it in the humanities? Is it um, law? Okay, good. Okay, law. All right, okay. So you are focusing on the, not just, well, of course, law and by extension, the law of the land. Okay. So um, others said to stay focused, to attend all lectures. Nice, Rajiv. Good. Denise said to balance work and study. So I'm seeing that we have a lot of working students here. And when I say working students, students who are working and um, studying at the same time, correct? Um, Kazana said to find a balance. Ooh, that's a key word, balance between school, life, and well, personal life, okay. To work hard, make friends, and get those in. Okay, I like, you know, this, this, this group seems to be very driven, and I like that. So we have a lot of expectations here to grow in all aspects. And I like that the broad thinking that we have here, because we already established that academic readiness is not just about academics, but it's about the, your all-round development and being able to thrive and not just survive. Keep that in mind. You're here to thrive and not just survive. All right. Um, okay, to learn new things, join clubs. So you, you're interested in the UE life as well. Good. So we have these, these expectations. And of course, these expectations, for every expectation, you have certain requirements, all right, in order to make those dreams a reality or to meet those expectations. So when we think of expectations, we, we you may have to establish boundaries in some instances. Boundaries meaning you, you, you may have to, you can't always go out with your friends because you have work to do. Or you may have to be selective with your association. You can't line with everybody. You might have to be very selective in terms of your inner circle, your, your study group even, because you don't want your study group to just meet and then you just talk all the time. You have to have that, that you know, discipline and, and balance. Um, managing expectations will require you to set goals. So some of the things we saw earlier, uh, you, you, those are some of the goals that you have. All right, it was a goal, Claudine, to grow in all aspects, all right, um, to connect with your peers and so on, and those sorts of things, all right? So we also have, we also have uh, the, the, the creating guidelines that have to define your, your personal duties. So your role as a student, what are the things that are required of you, all right? Um, so those things that are personal to you, and that often encompasses your beliefs, your, your morals and values, so those things that um, inform you as a person, all right? And of course, within the capacity of a student in this case. Specific skills you can expect to develop. So as, as, as um, Calvin mentioned, to gain knowledge and to help to, to contribute to his field in law. So those things, the skills that you develop, the psychomotor again, see? And interaction with others. I see, um, I think someone mentioned, um, Shadi mentioned um, to interact with others, basically study groups or clubs and, and that sort of thing. And your career trajectory, so your journey, all right? Even though you go into the world of work, your journey, your academic journey doesn't stop there. Tanisha said to prevent procrastination. Thank you so much for that, <laughs> uh, Tanisha. And that's a big part in your um, journey in this university. So why is it important to, to, to manage expectations? Well, of course, as we see here, some of the things entail um, really providing that sort of mental health. Because you have you ever, you know, there's a saying that sometimes high expectations could lead to uh, substantive disappointments or something along those lines. But this is why you don't want to just have expectations or wild dreams. Yeah. You want to manage those expectations, harness them, work on them, or work towards them. So when it, it, it works more towards your development and your gain as opposed to your disappointment, all right? So that's important that you uh, manage your expectations so that it doesn't take a toll of you emotionally, psychologically, and otherwise. Um, of course, managing expectations, building healthy relationships, all right? So you might need to manage or balance the, the, your social life, your personal life with your academic um, requirements yeah so for example your study groups you may have you might have the study group to help you in your academic journey or prepare for exams and so on but if that study group when you meet you're talking about 
the latest series on Netflix or, <laughs> or Disney Plus or whatever streaming network or even whatever, whatever is viral at the time on social media. So all of these things, you want to make sure that, you know, you establish healthy relationships and healthy relationships to uh, relationships that help in your all around development. So, okay, you might have some friends that, you know, you could socialize with in terms of you go out and you relax and you, you know, that, that kind of thing. But you might also have friends who comprise your study group or who are mentors to you, that sort of thing, to help in your navigation and uh, being able to thrive throughout this, 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 this journey. All right. Managing expectations also help you to empower yourself with structure. So you, you, you set boundaries, yes but you add structure and balance and create accountability. So you might be able to, 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 to liaise with someone, whether you were able to accomplish some, uh, a particular goal or not, someone to hold you accountable, or in some cases, someone to vent to, because sometimes you might be venting about the, the frustrations. It might, you know, this will test you, it will. All right, and of course, setting realistic goals. Now, along the way, you're going to make mistakes. And that's what I'm saying about, you know, it, it, it will test you. You will make mistakes. But just know that making mistakes doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. If anything, it's proof that you are trying, that you're applying yourself, and that you're taking it seriously. All right? And because you're taking it seriously, um, you're going to make those corrections, all right, to try and improve. And we know that improvement is synonymous with growth. So it's not that you're gonna try the first time and then give up if you don't succeed, but it would require you to try and try again and try again after, all right? I remember in mathematics, I struggled with mathematics um, from CSEC to A-levels to even um, and, and, and throughout my career thus far. Well, it's not a struggle anymore. Let me say that. Let me back up, back up. So it's not a struggle anymore, but I struggled at the beginning stages in mathematics. And, um, but I didn't give up. I failed math the first time and then I tried it again. I feel it again. And then <laughs> I tried it again. Of course, correcting the mistakes I made and I was able to pass it. So not always you're going to pass the course at the first attempt or not always you're going to pass the, the exam at the first attempt. And that's perfectly fine. That's okay. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. All right. So you try and try again. And um, you know, if you might try, you might fail, and you try again, you might fail again, you might try again, and you might succeed, like I did with math. So it doesn't mean the end of the world. Um, failure is sometimes part of the process. If anything, it helps you to learn the lessons and become better at it. All right. Now, another mistake is about being um becoming complacent or not serious. You you think it's a walk in the park or you get attracted to the the freedom or the, 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 the social life or UE life as it is, um, and not so much on the academic. And then there's the other extreme where it says you might be focused strictly on the academic and there's no, not much development otherwise. So you wanna be mindful that you get balance, all right? Balance is essential because without balance, then you're gonna, it's gonna be all over the place and that sort of thing. Yes, Calvin, balancing studying and sports, athletics and otherwise, or other, Calvin, you hit the nail on the head, man. I, um, I think somebody could give you a little thumbs up or whatnot. Um, um, so DSSD, you could probably just holler at Calvin right there, right? Um, so yes, you want to make sure that you have balance, that you're not too complacent, but you're not too, um, not too serious and not, not too complacent, all right? You want to find that middle ground, all right? So the, 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 as we, we wind down now, so some healthy practices for success. So some of the things you want to do to ensure that you succeed. Remember, you're here to thrive, not just survive. I should say the other way around. You're not here to just survive, you're here to thrive. So you aim for the sky. If you don't get the sky, okay, you have the clouds. And if you don't get the clouds, okay, you have maybe the trees or maybe some tall buildings or skyscrapers. And if you don't get the skyscrapers, okay, you can land in the trees. And if not, you could land on a bench or a desk, and, you know, start high, aim high, all right? Aim to thrive, all right? You don't know, you, you get what I'm saying, right? So some things that you would want to do is definitely devote that time to your course or your course side by learning. Um, and I know you have a session on that coming up. So make sure you devote some time to that regularly, not just once a week. It cannot be once a week, right? But you could split the hours up over the course of the week. Interact with your classmates. 
Um, be, don't miss that opportunity to develop social relationships, whether it's for studying purposes or for, for, for um, recreational purposes, that sort of thing. Because the recreational, don't ignore the recreational because that helps um, even in your brain development um, as you navigate in the academic arena. All right? Um, complete task on time. So don't procrastinate. Somebody said that in the chat. Do stick. All right. Submit original work because we all we, we are all aware. Of, well, maybe you may not have been aware just yet. I'm not sure if you had the, the 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 that presentation just yet. But of course, you know, we always expect original work. We we do not support plagiarism. So keep it real, keep it honest. All right. And of course, don't be afraid to ask for help. Everybody needs help at some point in time. So um, you definitely want to capitalize on that. And even though this is a bonus tip, it stems off of number five. Don't be afraid to ask for help, whether it's help in terms of IT support, whether it's help in terms of counseling and health services and that sort of thing. Um, and not just counseling, but all around development, physical as well. And even the division of um, student services and development. So who's spearheading this initiative? So you want to capitalize um, and make use of the resources that you have at your fingertips because we're here to help, all right? Um, and above all, let's you know you want balance. And I like this graphic because it's it's calming. It's you know just if you get stressed out, just take a, a step back a, couple, a little bit of time to get back that balance. All right. Um, so in terms of your academic growth, development, and continuous learning, don't be afraid to try new things. And this is a good opportunity as any to do that right now. Don't be afraid to try new things. If you were strictly focused on your academics before. Now you could kind of, not too much, not to go to, from one extreme to the next, but you could kind of branch out a little bit and look, develop new relationships, try new things, develop new skills. You have different clubs, you have different uh, uh, societies in this university that would help you with that. You have the theater um, uh, club, you have the UE Arts Chorale, you have um, uh, the, 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 the different religious groups. So all of these are opportunities for you to develop yourself and different in different capacities. So don't be afraid and don't miss those opportunities. Um, additionally, you definitely want to work hard, but not just work hard, you want to work smart. All right. You know, this is, <laughs> and it's a sort of pun too, because it's smart start, right? So <laughs> you want to work smart. So it, it, it's not just about working hard. Have you ever worked, and you could see in the chat, have you ever worked so hard and you sacrificed so much? And then you still didn't do as well as you thought you would have done. Anybody? You could just, yeah. You could. I know it happened to me. Yeah. Um, let's see the chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you you put in so much, and then you get little out of it, and it's frustrating. Yeah. So, so you want to work smart as well. So yes, you're putting in that hard work. You're working hard, but you're also working smart. And working smart doesn't mean that you cheat or you 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 give way to dishonest. Um, avenues but you definitely want to work smart in terms of okay if you like I, I was mentoring a student some some time ago and you want to be mindful that it's not just when that student was studying for example um they were only studying or reading over the things that they were good at that they knew that was like second knowledge to them but really that wasn't the smartest way to prepare for an exam right you, you want to focus on those areas that you're not good at that you're weak at yeah, so that's part of working smart. Um, working smart also entails that or encompasses you being aware of your learning style or preference. So if you're more of a visual, hands-on kind of learner, then you know you might have to um, find avenues or engage with the lecturer to, to, to facilitate those needs, yeah? So don't be afraid to do that, all right? Or something as simple as highlighting the notes in, in, a, in, a, in a textbook because you're visual, so that works as well. And make adjustments. What worked for you in CSEC or A levels may not work for you, um, or it would require some revision and adjustment in this arena. All right. Of course, be disciplined, be determined. So, you know, yes, we have a little bit of freedom now, but it doesn't mean your freedom is not without parameters. So, you now have to be more responsible to exercise some self control to keep your focus. And the academics to an extent. Yes, we have all these different clubs. And I'm saying this because this was said to me in my orientation how many years ago that primarily you're here 
to earn a degree. So even though we have these different clubs and so on, you're primarily here to earn a degree. And that requires that discipline, that focus and determination. So even though you might fail or may not do as well as you think, and yes, Amy, it becomes demotivating at times, but you know, we 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 know better than to give up just like that, right? As is, as you saying, you know, we, we <laughs> I'm saying this loosely, you know, we we are on pumps, right? We have some some mm, and if there's a, a moment where we didn't do as good as we thought we would have done, don't worry. It's you saw in the previous um, slides that it's an opportunity to do better, all right, and to move forward and to to as we say to go back in harder. All right, so stay motivated, stay determined, stay determined, and um, and you're gonna you're gonna get through. Keep that graduation ceremony in mind when you walk that stage to collect your degree. That moment, um, you know, and of course by extension the career benefits as well. So. Um, definitely stay motivated and um, and uh, you can do it. Just keep talking to yourself. You can do it. Just have balance, stay motivated, stay mentally um, uh, healthy and otherwise physically healthy, holistically healthy and, um, and disciplined. And you will definitely succeed. Remember, you're not here just to survive. You're here to thrive. All right. Any questions at all from anyone? on what we've covered thus far or anything for that matter. I know we have the team here as well. So any questions on academic readiness? I know some of you might be typing, so I'll give a couple of seconds for that. All right. And even though, yes, demotivation or, or frustration, it, that's part of it. But you know, you, you you learn to develop the the emotional capacity or manage your emotions to cope with that. It can't always be that you pass, pass, pass everything. But failure is part of the process. If anything, it develops your determination further. It develops your discipline further. It develops different skill set emotionally and otherwise. Explain the psychomotor more. Okay, good. So the psychomotor. Think of the psychomotor as do, as skills. Those things that you can do. So hands on. Yeah. Um, so, for example, you will be in this institution and you will be able to develop um, the distinctive view of graduates. Part of it is to be a uh, 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 critical thinker. But then part of that might be to, de to, to be able to develop certain things with your hands or to, 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 to have certain skills, whether it's communication skills, IT skills, um, skills specific to your field. All right. So the psychomotor is all about doing. And if you're a psychomotor kind of learner, now you have different, as we, on that, I'll just address it very quickly. One model states that you have four different types of learners or any combination of the four. You have the visual learner. That's a person that likes to see and you can read things and you can read and, or you like to look at videos, sorry. So, so, so YouTube, that's your go-to, all right? Or any kind of video for that matter. Um, or graphics, like what we, that's why I included some graphics in this PowerPoint because that appeals to you. Do you have the oral? So those persons, the oral type of learner, the yeah, Bark is V-A-R-K. So that's just the model I'm referring to. The oral kind of learner is a person who likes to, to listen. You could hear me talk for the whole day, probably not, but <laughs> you could listen to podcasts, you could listen to, to lectures, and you learn you could remember those things. You could remember what person said. See, the third type is the read and write kind of learner. So you might listen to someone speak and then you could write it over and over and it stays in your memory. Then you have the kinesthetic type of learner or the psychomotor kind of learner who likes that hands-on experience. You like to build things, you like labs, you like to go in the field and do things. For me, that's why I liked geography even more, going into the field and doing you know, the, the, the field work, looking at settlements and drainage patterns and, and coastal environments and those sorts of things. And that's why geography became such a, I love geography. So. So, you know, it, it became real to me because I like doing those hands-on things. So, and you could be any combination of the four, yeah? So you could be a visual kinesthetic, you could be an oral, a read and write and an oral kind of learner. All right, so hopefully that, that explains it to you. All right, or clarifies it for you. Um, Stefan said, not related to academic advising, but where can we access the recording? Okay, I think that was answered right after the, uh, the UWIFYE channel, YouTube channel. 
So thank you so much for that. Any other questions? And the link to the YouTube uh, channel is there as well. So anyone who needs to review this PowerPoint or this presentation, you can definitely do so. Amita, okay, thank you so much. <laughs> You're most welcome, thank you. Um, do you have any tips on how to balance working and going to school? Um, yes, because um, I did the same at one point in time. So what worked for me, now you have to know your schedule and your different, your various commitments. For me, I had to, to cut down on certain things and make various commitments I had at the time. Um, so let's say if you're working during the day, then in the, in the evening, and when I say evening, afternoon into evening period, you might want to get that, take that time for yourself to sort of unwind, recharge, and then in the evening or the night, you go back into the work. You do the, as much work as you can, um, and you try to get some rest. You don't want to go all the way until three, four in the morning, and then you have to get up at six or eight, or well, not eight, but six or five in the morning to go to work. So because you know you can't, you can't, you wouldn't be able to function. It, it'll start to fall apart after a while. So make sure you get that rest. Make sure you have a healthy diet. Um, make sure you 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 keep things. Um, structured. So structure is important if you're studying and working at the same time. All right. Some things you might have to say no to. Say, you have to say no to some things or to sacrifice certain things, and that's just a reality. Just know that it's temporary. And um, you know, once you finish your program or once your semester is done, then you can go back to your full. You, you're free, at least somewhat. All right. Um, Marcus asks, any tips for res or resources on adjusting from full time work to full time school? Okay, this is a good, um, I think being in this particular initiative, not just this session, but this entire orientation program is a step in the right direction, Marcos. Um, I think it would orient you to, and not just here, don't just stop here, but when we have, for example, the orientation week. Um, so you, I think that's a week where we get to see the different clubs, the different um, UB life as it will. Um, and perhaps the, the team will share on that later on, but. You definitely want to take some time to understand the, the UE life, as it will, or the culture on the campus. Um, that includes different systems and IT and these different things, as well as um, develop perhaps a study timetable or a schedule that would incorporate just not just your, your classes, but also the time that you're taking to study for each course. So that is important because, and after a while it becomes second nature to do, you may not have to depend on a, on a schedule per se. Someone asked, do you have any tips if you have a different learning style from your lectures? Um, I would recommend doing the Bach uh, uh, survey. So those four learning styles I mentioned that, and I can send that to the, send that link to you in the chat right after this presentation. All right. Do you have any tips about university rules, brand new rules on plagiarism? Well, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a very relevant uh, when all your questions are relevant, but that is a very timely. Um, uh, uh, question, Brandon. Yes, there are university rules on plagiarism. Very strict rules that are allowed to that. Um, and there are different platforms that that help in, and I'm saying this so you know, and you can be guided accordingly, that help in that in detection of potential plagiarism and so on. So you want to be very wise and um, adhere to ethical, um, ethic, ethical and um, academic, uh, well, ethical rules. Or, or guidelines that inform um, ethics and in academic integrity. So if it's not honest, then you want to stay away from it <laughs> or make sure that what you're doing, what you're presenting is original. If it's not entirely original, you credit whatever source you got it from or sources. All right, we have another question. Thanks for the information. You're most welcome. Um, I think, uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Henry, good. Does UE assist part-time students by giving recommendations on jobs? Um, good question, Macy. I think um, DSSD is the perfect um, uh, de department division to address that. So yes, you're in the right place and the right time. Are there any, Marcus, mature students acquainting to themselves to higher learning? Yes, there is a, a, a course that um, is it's in my learning. Um, I can't remember the name of it right now. But it's um, basically, um, if you, when you log into MyLearning, you're going to see it. I think it's on the right side of the column. 
Um, I can't remember the exact name of the course right now, but that's, yes, that's a course that it, it's not for marks. It's not for marks or anything. So it's, you can do it. It usually just takes a couple of days to complete um, and you can do it at your, your own time. It's asynchronous. And um, so you can get, it'll orient you to, to, to higher learning and even learning in the online environment. So you develop those skills as well. All right, Marcos? Just to add as well, Dr. Zephyrin, that mm -hmm. for Student Life and Development Department, uh, we do have specialized support services for students that may identify as mature students. Yeah. So Marcus, Thank you so much for that. You can definitely benefit from that service as well. And of course, we encourage you to visit our website. Definitely. Thank you so much, everyone, for your questions. And um, do remember to, to have fun with this, this journey. Um, but still maintain balance. Remember those keywords, balance. And you're here to, you're not here to, to survive, you're here to thrive. All right. And if you need help, it's just a, an email, a phone call, a walk away. All right. So do have a good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Dr. Zafrin, I want to say a sincere thanks. And I think we'll be getting some virtual applause coming in very soon. I'm seeing some <laughs> soon. for those Thank persons you. whose cameras are on. And well, you see it's coming through the chat. So Dr. Zephyrin, we want to say thank you so very much for spending this time with our students and sharing such valuable information with them and advice. Um, and students, of course, we encourage you to reflect on everything that you received. And as we continue to say through this Smart Start series, you will have opportunities to ask the relevant questions that you need every step of the way. So even if you feel like you did not get some questions in today or something might pop up a little later on, we encourage you to reach out to us. We are a university community committed to your success. So we encourage you to reach out to us. So Dr. Zephyrin, thank you so very much. We're very, very happy to have had you and students. I trust that you benefited from everything that Dr. Zephyrin uh, shared with you. And of course, once you get to campus, you will connect with Dr. Zephyrin. It's likely that you'll connect with <laughs> this team at some point. So Dr. Zephyrin, thanks again. So students, at this point in our program, we will be shifting gears a bit. We will open our virtual breakout rooms where you will get a chance to engage with members of your faculty. But before you do, I want to take to the chat to see if we can send some faculty love here. Let us know in the chat which faculty you're repping this afternoon. And I, I hope I, I get some smiles coming in as well, right? You actually have members from your respective faculties here this afternoon, we are going to be engaging with for the first time. Nice and seeing lots of things coming through the chat. Of course, and colleagues of the faculties, we know that we're going to extend a very warm welcome to our students. So uh, colleagues within the faculty uh, or respective faculties, I want to give you an opportunity at this time to head over to your breakout rooms. We'll ask that you join the rooms first and then we'll have our students join. All right, so colleagues, we know the process to get to the virtual room. So if we can do that at this point, students, we're asking to hang on in the main session just for a moment. If we can give our facilitators maybe just two minutes uh, for them to get to their virtual breakout rooms, and then you will have an opportunity to choose the room that you will join. All right, so faculty, giving you a moment to help across the virtual room. So if you can select, and we will hang out here with our students for a moment. Great. So welcome back everyone um, to our main session. Uh, just as with our you know, um, first part of the presentation, so students, you've heard about academic readiness. You've been introduced to the very important academic advising process that you'll soon be a part of. And so, as always, we want to encourage you to reflect on everything that you learned. Uh, this is your time to reach out. We are wind June is winding down. So now is a really, really good time to sort of start formulating that plan so that you don't get into that rush closer to the start of registration. Okay, so as we seek to close officially today's program, I want to toss over to my team who would play for you what we call FYE Top 5. Uh, for students that were here with us over the last few weeks, you'll be familiar with this, but for our new students, we definitely want you to benefit from this, all right? So team, over to you for FYE Top 5. <laughs>
great. So wonderful. FYE top five versus students, of course, in addition to everything else as you received today and over the last few weeks, we are encouraging you to engage with the content that we have out there so that your transition to this first day of study is a seamless one, okay? So before we wrap, just a few things we want to mention as always. Your feedback is invaluable, all right? So we want to hear from you on how we can improve uh, this orientation process for you. So we are going to share with you in the chat. So you should look out for a message from Mr. Henry. So that's Mr. Alexi Henry, who would soon place a link in the chat. I'm seeing that it's placed there already. We're encouraging you to want to complete the survey and share with us your feedback so that we can improve this new student orientation experience for you. It's only five questions. It's not going to take you long at all, but we definitely want to hear how orientation is impacting you and how we can better serve. Okay, so that's one. Two, uh, this is the penultimate uh, session of Smart Start. So remember, your orientation does not end here. We have lots of exciting things uh, for you in the next coming weeks, including an opportunity to come to campus and meet other first year students like yourself and explore the campus and engage in a tour and all of those wonderful things, okay? So we're encouraging you to stay tuned to your emails, of course, and our digital platforms where we will provide uh, all information that you will need in real time, okay? So students, this brings us to the end of today's Smart Start session officially. And on behalf of the entire team at our campus, we want to say thank you for joining us. We trust that you had an insightful and enjoyable experience with us today. And we encourage you, of course, to reflect on everything that you've learned and apply the knowledge as you navigate this first year of study. Here's a gentle reminder that this is session four or five. So we look forward to seeing you next Thursday right here at 1 p.m. for our fifth and final Smart Start session. I can't believe that June is already up, but our fifth and final Smart Start session will be held next week, Thursday. And at next week's session, we will meet for the first time members of the Guild Council. At next week's session as well, we will close off the Smart Start series with a recap of the student checklist. And we'll give you a rundown as well of all of the exciting orientation events planned just for you from July all through September and into the new semester. So we look forward to you joining us next week right here at 1 p.m. So students, we encourage you to stay connected with us on Instagram and all other digital platforms. And be sure to check out the FYE website for support resources and key information that you would need. Today's session will be made available for viewing, like all other sessions, via our FY YouTube channel. So we uh, encourage you to subscribe for this and more. So students, this officially brings us to the end of session for Smart Start. We want to say thank you for spending this time with us. And we look forward to connecting with you virtually next week. Thank you and do have a great rest of the day. And I'm a tour. And we are your DSSD student champion. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook, follow our Instagram, to stay engaged. Hashtag Pelican Pride.